Hello, this is Dr. Mike. And so for chapter number 17, I want to talk to you a little bit about animal ethics. And I think you'll be surprised with this chapter to learn that uh, there's a lot more to animal ethics than just as a pet lover, pet owner. Uh, there are many different aspects that I think you will find to be quite interesting, including hunting, including vegetarianism, uh, animal research, endangered species, uh, and even cloning, which has happened in our own day in which we have taken one cell from a sheep by the name of Dolly and actually cloned another organism separate and complete that lived to its life's term and uh, his life was fairly normal. So uh, there are some aspects of that which will be quite interesting that pertain also to human cloning and other aspects that we read about sometimes in the paper. <coughs> So I'd like to talk to you uh, about this today and explain the, the difference between a concern for human welfare and a concern for animal rights. There's a great deal of difference in that. And we'll talk about speciesism and articulate some criticisms of this idea that we see as a part of the ethics of animal care that I think you will find most interesting. First of all, let me open our slides for our discussion. And while we're thinking about that, we will uh, we'll be discussing these uh, different aspects today that I think will be uh, quite quite interesting to you uh, as a uh, you know as a human being and as a pet lover. Uh, most of the people in this class are not in vet tech, which this class also goes there. Uh, but most of you are in nursing, so animals will have a part of that piece of, of ethics you need to consider. So first of all, we talk about the current issues in this area of the of the ethics of, of animal care and animal of uh, animalism. Uh, so first of all is moral vegetarianism uh, in which uh, we find problems with raising and killing animals for food and factory farms. Uh, you don't probably don't think about this when you go to buy your groceries, but there are all kinds of markings on plant, on animal, on, on foods in grocery stores that indicate how that animal was raised and how it was maintained and all different things. But eggs are one very easy thing to look at. Uh, you'll see cartons there that say not, not caged, which meant those chickens actually lived on the ground and walked on dirt. Uh, but there are other eggs that are made from animals that live in cages 24 seven, never see the ground, never get fresh air. Those kind of things become an issue for the ethics in relation to animal care. Factory farms in which uh, animals are just grown for food. I uh, had a cousin who raised chickens in Georgia. Uh, he had three chicken houses. There were 90,000 chickens in the house, and uh, they raised them in 30 days, which means they pumped them full of hormones. They super grew them, turned them onto the market, and sold it to customers. Customers ate the chicken and the hormones and everything else, which is one of the reasons, as we've said before, that we have this problem with our children now maturing at eight and nine years old because they're getting all these growth hormones and from people who, of course, throw them down the toilet, uh, but mostly from, from animals uh, and those kind of things. So eating beef, they do beef and chicken much the same way they try to grow them out at a very quick rate. Another issue about uh, animals would be experimentation, that we use animals to experiment with medications and things to see our cosmetics for many years. Cosmetics was at the cusp of this industry against animal abusing of animals because they used the cosmetics to see what the long-term effect were on an animal. But the, the idea of, of experimentation is recently as the COVID vaccine, uh, we were using animals to test COVID vaccine. It's better than doing it on humans. And we do it, of course, on animals that are as close to us as possible in the genetic lineup, which would be, of course, a chimpanzee, which has almost the same number of chromosomes that humans do. So basically, as we look at this, we, we look at the different aspects of things being done, whether it's ethical, whether it's not. Then there's endangered species, uh, which we have lots of in this country where species are literally disappearing uh, because of other invasive species, like the snakes in Florida. You hear so much about these giant Asian snakes that have been turned loose there, and they've now taken over the, the uh, Florida Bayou, basically, killed off all of the other smaller animals and working on the larger ones. They actually can eat deer and snake, uh, other snakes and alligators. And so these are some quite big snakes that they're finding there. But the biodiversity is being destroyed. That is, the habitat 
for all these smaller animals that have a place in the food chain and they have a purpose for keeping us alive on the planet. And we don't realize until too late that they're gone and we have nothing to replace them with. So uh, these snakes are really, really invasive and really moving. Uh, they found one in Georgia, one in South Carolina now that's apparently came from Florida. So we see those animals moving further north because their food is getting short where they are. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is whether animals have moral standing, whether they have intrinsic rights or, or rights in general, uh, whether they're on the same token as a human. Uh, there, there are actually religions that would argue that, Buddhism would argue that, that animals and humans are very closely connected and they won't do anything to an animal they wouldn't do to another human. So they're very much in line with their own teaching of their religion. Uh, but we do have certain ideas in ours as well. So how do we approach animal ethics? Uh, there are different ways in which we uh, value animals. Some of them we look at it from an, a, an anthropocentricism, a, a, a human-centered, they're here for our good, for our food, for whatever. And then we look at it from the non-anthropocentric, they're, they're here not for our good, but for the maintenance of the whole planet. Um, then we talk about sentience, which is the sense of an animal having a soul. This is one thing the Buddhists would talk about a great deal about other sentient beings, other beings that are sensitive, that are awake, that are alike, then we should not be killing them, or, you know, equal considerations, animal welfare, all those things will come into play. And it, they evaluate that based upon an animal's capacity to feel or the capacity to sense pain. Uh, if you're dealing with animals and you're dealing with it from a, the medical test aspects, that would be a very big deal. Can, can the animal feel the pain? Uh, do they have a sense of what's going on? And so th there's all kind of different things, parts of that also that apply to cruelty to animals, people that take animals and treat them inhumanely. Um, and there's all kind of different pain. And so you'll, you, when you read the book, you'll talk, Singer talks about speciesism and its importance. And I think it's something well worth you, uh, worth you reading. Uh, so when we think about our approach to animal ethics, uh, you know, we, we ought to take the animal's interest at heart. Uh, animals are, are much further down the food chain than we are, but by the same token, we should really take care of them. Singer says that all animals are equal. Uh, the example, you know, we talk, use, use the equality of women as an example. Uh, all these things you're going to read about, I think you'll find to be very, very helpful in understanding this thing of animal speciesism and the idea of equality. Uh, probably that won't get very far uh, at least now in, in our government, but uh, there, there's a whole group of people that are interested in this very thing and the plants being at the same level as human beings. And I think you'll find that to be quite an interesting uh, argument. And if it ever gets to the Supreme Court, whether they vote on it or not, probably not, because that would be considered a pretty liberal idea. And with, with conservatives in power, it probably wouldn't gain traction. But to let you know, there's at least people out there that are making the attempt uh, to do that. Last thing I want to mention to you is cloning. As I said, uh, they took a, a one cell. They can take that one cell from anywhere, from your hair, from your skin, uh, wherever it is. They took that one cell and they expanded it and copied its DNA and, and folded it back in on the organism to create a living being or living uh, animal. And so then the, when the sheep was born, they called it Dolly. And Dolly went straight to the trough and get to feed and went straight to the line and began to use her body as a defense for, for, uh, share, for, for uh, you know, things being done against her. So let me encourage you to read this chapter. I think you will find it to be most helpful. There's some great notes at the end. And it's a subject that we don't normally think about, but when you're thinking about race and uh, those kinds of things, this is a good chapter to come back to and what makes you uh, accepting of other races, other people. Uh, should be a part of your, your ethic. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow.